So, good morning, everybody. So, we've got a case here of uh, an upper central, and again, this was another external uh, referral that was sent to me, and the uh, referring dentist was uh, concerned about the, um, the, the, the possible open apex. So, um, there looks like a, a little bit of inflammatory resorption at the end of this, this, this tooth here. And we're also concerned about not being able to see any of the uh, sort of canal space and obviously the restorability of this tooth as well. So the patient's main complaint uh, was that she didn't like the look of the tooth, um, it was just a bit bright, and she wanted obviously this, this, uh, this, this crown to be replaced. But obviously when the referring dentist took the x-ray, found that the tooth was infected, so this needs to be rectified before a new crown is, is placed on. So um, the referring dentist had asked me to sort of do uh, a, few, a few more steps than I would usually do. And obviously they've asked me to do the root canal um, and, and before that check the restorability. But also they've asked me to um, place a post if required and, um, and, on, and obviously a, a provisional crown, etc, etc, etc. So the first thing um, we want to do here is that obviously to check the restorability of this tooth, we're going to have to take the crown off. And um, what, what I'm what I'm going to use here is I'm going to just take a, a an alginate index. So this is just a just a sort of sectional alginate, and this takes a, a kind of a, a sort of negative copy of the the crown we're going to be taking off. And I was um, I was I was pretty sure actually that this tooth was uh, this this crown was very very loose. So um, in the first instance, I tried to use an excavator just to try and sort of undermine the crown and push it off. Uh, and in this case, um, you know, the crown was proper solid on. So um, what I had to do is just physically uh, drill uh, the, the crown off. So what I usually do is I just uh, drill kind of a channel down the center of, uh, of, of, the, of, the, of the crown here. And then I kind of undermine it with, a, with an ultrasonic tip. And then I try and use an excavator to try and just sort of peel back um, the sort of margins of the crown. And of course, some of the ceramics gonna come off. And I feel like as you peel back the kind of um, the, the, the the coronal margins of this crown, that that will dislodge uh, the, the 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 crown. And you'll notice now that the core of the tooth was fractured inside the crown. So straight away, what we want to do is we want to get um, our rubber dam on. And you'll notice now that um, the, the 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 tooth has been root canal. So the Referring dentists were worried that they couldn't see the canal space, but actually it was just filled with GP, and this GP is probably not as radio opaque as, as you know, kind of GP we use now. So, um, you know, I, I, I have no idea of the condition of this GP. It doesn't look very good at all, and it looks quite a very old piece of GP. And what I want to do is I want to try and remove this in one. Okay, that's probably the most important thing here. And um, I'm going to use my obvious uh, screw, screw, pull technique with a H file and um, just kind of just doing this all the way around the GP to try and try and dislodge it um, in, in, in one and obviously you can use this G, uh, DG endodontic probe to try and sort of dislodge and it does, dis does dislodge. And then when we look down the canal we can see that there's lots of space and um, this GP hasn't been compacted very well and I'm going to use just an ultrasonic, high energy ultrasonic to try and drag out as much of this GP as possible. I, I feel like there's there's not a lot of GP here so I can be quite gung-ho with my approach to try and remove this this uh, this remaining GP. And in fact, I just pull it out there with a, with a, with a, with a, with a uh, H file and that's a lovely thing there. So obviously there's fragments of GP remaining. I'm going to use a high energy ultrasonic there just to give it a good old clean out and then I've got this um, this sort of GP remover it's got it's kind of like a very long DG endodontic probe maybe twice as long as a DG probe with a tiny little hook on the end and I'm just pulling out these tiny tiny little fragments again like I always say lots and lots of patience you're in no rush just take your time um, be calm and just just slowly slowly pull these things out and then um, obviously we're gonna irrigate. I, I do like to use these uh, stainless steel needles rather than the Iriflex when I am irrigating during a, a reroute treatment. I just feel like they've got a bit more uh, strength to them. Obviously the, these, these irrigation tips are taking a bit more brunt when you're trying to remove uh, GP, but you'll notice soon what will happen is once I know all the GP is out, is out, I will swap it over for my sort of more flexible Iriflex tip. 
So straight away, I feel like all of the GP is out and I'm gonna attempt to take a, uh, a working length measurement. And sometimes this can be difficult, especially when there's no crown and you can kind of think, well, do we do the reference point from the adjacent tooth or do we do it from the tooth itself? And we can see here that it's, it's 16 millimeters. Okay, that's short, but don't forget there's no crown on the tooth, okay? So we're gonna do lots and lots and lots of irrigant, lots and lots of irrigant, and then I'm gonna activate this, okay? So the activation is gonna create these kind of a cavitation bubbles that are gonna um, get the irrigant into all the little nooks and crannies. And I am just very, very gently activating the irrigant, checking that there's um, there's no irrigant left, so I can have a little look to try and pull out um, some some any of the remaining GP, and I have got all the way to the end. So I know that the uh, the apex of this tooth is quite wide. Okay, so I'm gonna use a wider diameter ha uh, hand file here just to check my working length. And we know that when we use a wider diameter hand file, um, then, uh, then then the, the measurement is gonna be more accurate than say if we use a size 10. And um, again, I can confirm that the working length is 16. So the 10 did do it right. So it's at this point now where I think to myself that I know that the apex is wide on this. How do I know? Well, radiographically, it looks wide, but also when I use my hand file, especially my size 25 H file there to do the working length, it just dropped a length. And in fact, when we were getting the zero reading and when we were getting the z reading that was getting pushed out the end, um, it just it just fell through. So we know it's wide, okay. And the question is how wide. So what I'm going to do is I am going to get a quite a large diameter GP point, and then I'm going to just sort of randomly guess out of the air what I think the the, the diameter of this. Uh, this apex is so what i'll usually do is i'll be quite conservative so i've got this uh this this gp cutter here and what that does it cuts the gp to a certain diameter and weirdly in this case uh what's happened is i've sort of guesstimated that the uh, the, the the apical diameter is 60 so you can see i'm using this gutter cut here just to cut it and then when i fit this gp to length um um, and, and I feel that kind of snug kind of tug back and then I obviously pick it up with the tweezers and then I measure this length we find out that it's 15.5 so I've just guessed the apical diameter it doesn't always happen but now we know that that is now fully to length and what we need to do is we need to take a comb fit radiograph so I'm going to snip it off at the end and then when we take the comb fit radiograph it looks fantastic it's to the, to the end it looks nice we're going to take the GP point out now and then we're going to do our final disinfection protocol don't forget you've got to be super careful the, the apex is super wide so you don't want to push the uh, the irrigant out of the end because that's obviously a bad thing just be super super careful you know use the, uh, the the sort of tip two millimeters away from the apical end so now we know that the the canal space is nice and clean and um, I'm gonna dry it with with paper points some people might ask that you know why why haven't I dressed this tooth um, and, and then got the patient back in. And I think that's a really, really strong argument uh, for someone, uh, for, for, for us to do that. Um, I had um, two hours with this patient and um, you know we were really motoring along. You know, I, I'd, I'd managed to get the crown off, I'd managed to uh, remove all the GP, I'd managed to get the working length all within half an hour, which left us you know, an hour and a half um, to disinfect the tooth. This is just anecdotal evidence, okay? This is just based on my opinion, and there's no science behind this. But I feel like if I dress the tooth with, um, you know, uh, non-setting calcium hydroxide and got the patient in a two weeks time, is that any better than me spending a good half an hour to 45 minutes just replenishing the canal space with fresh um, hypochlorite, activating it? You know, I, I've got all the time in the world. I'm, I'm motoring along and basically I'm just listening to the radio and I'm just irrigating, activating, um, you know, irrigating, activating, irrigating, activating. And you'll notice when you irrigate the tooth um, at the start, you know, all of the irrigation when you activate it just turns into this kind of pond water. But as you do it for a very, very long period of time, the, the irrigation and the activated irrigant it essentially just comes out nice and clean. So, you, so we know it's clean. So in my mind, 
I feel like the canal space has been cleaned effectively, but I'd be interested to know what you think in the comment section below. Do you do you like to dress the, the teeth, or um, a, a, do you agree with me? So we're we're gonna we're gonna dry the, the canal now with the, with with paper points, and then we are going to use a resin based sealer to seal this tooth. Now um, you can't use a bi ceramic because again ad nauseum the uh, it doesn't work very well with heat. I know there are bi ceramics that work well with heat. But in this case, I'm going to use AH plus, and um, we know that the, uh, the 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 canal space is super wide. Okay, now I have used a, a wider diameter GP point. I think this is maybe a 3506, but still, you can see there that it's kind of rattling around in there. And just using a single cone technique with sealer just isn't going to suffice today. So what we are going to have to use is a little bit of heat. So what I'm going to now do is I am going to burn off the excess and I'm going to make sure I've got a nice kind of apical plug here. And um, I, I, I am not so gung-ho with things like this. You know, I, I like to be super careful because I'm really worried about extrusion. Okay, even though I have um, apically gauged the tooth, I'm still doubting myself. That I don't want to push it down too much. The amount of times I've pushed it down really hard, it's gone out the end and I've got to sort of hook it back out. And... Um, what I notice here is I've probably um, burned just the uh, just the, the sort of the sort of coronal third of this GP, and then when I've pushed it down, I've only really compacted the the coronal to mid third, and you can see here that the obturation here is not adequate enough. Okay, especially in the mid to apical third, there's there's obvious voids here. So, what's really really important in this case? is that um, obviously the, the voids are removed. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be a bit more brave. Okay, I'm gonna get my heated plugger and I'm gonna activate the heat and I'm gonna push down really, really hard and then I am gonna pull the heated plugger out. And um, you'll notice here that I haven't pulled that in the excess and I've just sort of pushed the GP into the walls. Um, and there's quite a large void here. So what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to use my heated plugger to try and remove some of that uh, GP. And, and what's a really good way of removing GP with a heated plugger is just to touch the heated plugger onto the GP and just slowly, very, very quickly activate it. And that usually picks it up and you can and you can pull it out. And again, it's, it's just about taking your time, be, being super, super, super careful. And um, you know, I'm just just removing some of the some of the sort of GP that's been pushed against the walls here. And then now I'm going to do use a Mac two plugger just to uh, just to push the, the 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 sort of GP down and in, into the apical third and make sure that sign of apical plug of GP is all nicely is all nicely condensed. So once I know that the GP is all nicely condensed at the end, I am now going to use my B and L uh, backflow unit. So. I can see the GP um, all the way to the end here. So what I am going to do, just to save time, I'm going to backfill it all the way. Again, sometimes I like to backfill a little bit, push it down, backfill a little bit, push it down. And, um, you know, I've, I've just backfilled it all the way because I know that I'm going to get a nice kind of mono block of, 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 of GP. So it's at this point where I'm thinking to myself, you know, it do, does this does this does this tooth need a fat a fat post? And you know, I feel like um, I think that I could get um, you know a, a decent ferrule around this tooth. So what I've decided to do is I'm just going to use a core uh, composite just in the kind of sort of coronal third of this tooth, um, and I'm going to use a, a bulk flow just to build build this up nicely. I'd really like to know people's opinions on, on this sort of um, clinical decision. Would you have fiber post this tooth? Do you think you would have got a better result? Um, you know, but I, I just think in this case, I um, I think for me to um, to put a fiber post in this is that I would probably have to use quite a thick fiber post because the uh, the canal space is is quite wide. Um, and you know it's kind of kind of that way up, isn't it? Where you you say to yourself, well, maybe you don't have to um, uh, kind of d um, c 
cut a channel for the the, 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 the post at all because obviously it's so wide. But my, my, my concern with this is it's always nice to have a kind of like a channel for the for the post to kind of fit into because obviously if if you're uh, putting a fiber post in a tooth which is rattling around and moving around then obviously when you come to set the thing it, it might set in the wrong position so rightly or wrongly i decided not to place a fiber post again you know any comments you just let me know and then i'm just going to build it up with this sdr bulk uh, bulk flow composite and then i am going to just do a very very rough uh, crown prep okay and the rubber dam kind of gets in the way so I'm just kind of removing it out of the way but not completely removing the rubber dam totally and and I suppose in a way that you, the, 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 the tooth has been pretty much shaped um, but um, you know you just just need to shape this kind of this core filling and um, and, and sometimes there are kind of little spurs around uh, the sort of the margin of this tooth so I'm just using ultrasonic there just to remove the spurs I'm not a restorative dentist by the way I do I do need to uh, make people aware of that so I'm assuming you know other people's techniques for crown prep and things might be a little bit different and um, you know we've got the finished article there looks looks super nice and obviously the patient can't go away um, at home with this so we're gonna have to make some kind of sort of provisional and I'm using a white stone here just to kind of uh, you know just just polish up the, the, the prep a little bit and then what we're going to use now is we're going to use that index we took with the alginus. So we're going to we're going to fill that with you know a luxatem type of material, you know, like a, a temporary crown material, and then we're going to push um, the the index onto the tooth, let it set, and then when you pull uh, the, uh, the the index away, you can see that now we've got this uh, this this the tooth, and the tooth is exactly as it as it was. And um, essentially now what we've got to do is we've just got to prepare this tooth. And the kind of problem with um, preparing a temporary crown, obviously you've got to think about the path of insertion of the crown, okay? So um, a lot of people, what they like to do is they like to fit the, fit the index on with the, with the temporary crown material and just as about to set, you pull it off. Me, I'm not so brave. I like to make sure it sets absolutely completely and sometimes it can be difficult to get the crown off. And you'll notice if you do that, um, then this has implications for the final result of the temporary crown because obviously um, I've had to try and um, fit the crown and make the crown so the path of insertion, you know, the sort of the sort of higgledy piggledy of the the, the two teeth either side. Um, obviously, um, what happens is when I put this crown back on now, there's quite a significant black triangle between the two crowns, and and I suppose the aesthetic result isn't perfect. So. Um, you know, I, I I I think overall it's a it's 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 a nice result. It's acceptable. Okay, I suppose in a way you could argue that if you made uh, the temporary crown too nice, um, then obviously the patient wouldn't come back. Um, that's never happened to me before. But you hear things like that, and then I'm just gonna obviously cement it on with uh, with some temp bond because you need a, a bond which is easily removed. Okay, because obviously you want to just pop this crown off, and you just make the patient away. You know, no sticky sticky foods or anything like that. Just be mindful of the you know the temporary nature of this crown, and um, yeah, I'm just gonna polish it up, make it look a bit nice. Doesn't look perfect, but it's fit for purpose. And um, you know, we look at the X-ray looks beautiful you know we've got we've got a few voids I, I, I recognize that but I think the, um, the 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 working length is perfect I suppose if you look that it isn't at the radiographic apex but I feel like the end of the tooth has suffered some kind of resorption or some sort of difficulty so um, so I, I know that that is the zero reading and then we look at the, the temporary crown and um, yeah it just looks definitely doesn't it? it looks perfect it looks looks really really nice patient was super happy and yeah nice result so thanks again for watching um again i, I say this once a thousand times any criticisms any comments anything you would have done differently got any questions about the case please comment in the section below this video um let's get everyone involved let's get lots of learning let's get the you know the spread the love of endo and if you love endo, we've got a membership program here at, uh, on the YouTube channel.
you pay a monthly subscription you get to support the channel and you get early access to content so uh, videos like this uh, I usually run on a, a three-week lead time so this 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 uh, this 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 case was was completed three weeks ago and you get early access to all those uh, all those cases and uh, the next tier up is if you are a member of my uh, pub lover um, uh, membership program is that um, if you ask a question in the comment section below then I will uh, reply to you with a video short and everyone's got access to those video shorts if you're a member so you can sort of look back at any sorts of questions and um, I'd like to thank you for watching and I will see you uh, next week bye bye